Hmm. All right, all right. Welcome back to my series on astrological ascendance. Yesterday we did the Cancer Ascendant, and this time we are doing the Leo Ascendant. Now, if you don't know what an Ascendant is, if this is the first time you're watching one of these videos, your Ascendant sign in astrology is a point in the sky characterized by the eastern horizon, what zodiac sign was coming up, what degree of what zodiac sign was coming up in the eastern horizon. Um, because you can calculate virtually everything else in the sky where all the other constellations were from this point, those constellations and those houses become your house system, and each house corresponds to an area of your life, and the correspondence is the same as the zodiac the 12 zodiac signs so for instance the first house corresponds to aries the second house corresponds to taurus the third house corresponds to gemini uh, all the way around to the 12th house corresponding to pisces and the things that pisces relates to um if you don't know what these signs mean you can go look at my sun through the signs to get a pretty good idea of what these signs are like or you could just do a google search of what these signs energies and patterns of behavior are like when they are expressed so leo ascendant so if you remember in my sun in leo video i said that the sign of leo represents creativity it represents artistic achievements and it represents being the center of attention. It represents music, dance, and everything to do with being on a stage. So, um, the deity ruling Leo is the sun. So, no matter where the sun is placed, like let's say the sun is in Virgo, the Leo ascendant is going to take on a Virgo quality, but we'll get into what that means later. Um, so, First house being Leo, first house corresponds to Aries. It represents your goals and your ambitions and your life pattern and your, your just why you're here, basically, your life purpose. Um, if your first house is in Leo, it means that you are here to do art of some form. You are here to create something, um, whether that's children, whether that's music, whether that's some sort of other art. Um, Leo always deals with your aesthetic, your personal sense of self-aesthetic, how you make yourself appear as your highest self in the physical form. So these people are typically quite well-dressed and they're typically quite, like they put a lot of um, weight on how other people perceive them and how they are perceived by themselves and how, how they look makes them feel. And that is kind of their purpose, to be the center stage. Um, their second house, which again always corresponds to Taurus, is in the sign of Virgo. And Virgo energy is very calculative, it's very analytical, and it's very problem solving, and it's about facts. So these people put a lot of detail into the, how they dress, the second house always corresponds to food. It corresponds to your clothing. Um, so these people are, they typically know a fair bit about diet and they typically know a fair bit about uh, style. <clears throat> and um, they have a pretty stable knowledge of how things like, phys things in the physical world operate. So um, this is a good place for the second house to be because it gives somebody a lot of information on food and clothes and things of value that somebody with a less analytical second house might not have. These people's third house is, again, third house always deals with communication, is in the sign of Libra, typically. So if your third house is in Libra, it means that you are your speech and your communication is based on negotiation and you're very good at one-on-one -on -one communication and you're also very good at conflict resolution. So these people can calm other people down with their voice and can also convince other people to do things through their speech and communication. Um, 
these people's fourth house is the sign of Scorpio. And this can be kind of a sort of damaging fourth house. The fourth house is related to emotions and your um, sort of quality of your experience and your sense of security. And fourth house is ruled by the moon. Now the moon is debilitated in Scorpio. So these people's family lives tend to suffer and they tend to be full of a lot of ups and downs. Um, not saying that this is bad because it does teach these people things since Scorpio is a sign of intense information gathering. Um, and these people feel comfortable only when they know what's going on. Like they have to know everything to a certain level of detail to feel secure. And if they don't know that, then they feel very unstable. Um, so these people, if their mercury is well-placed and if their Mars is well-placed, um, for gathering information, they can sort of turn their life, their emotional quality around and become more stable because they can understand things. But if they have a bad Mercury placement and a bad Mars placement and a bad Jupiter placement, they can be very frustrated because they just never feel like they know enough, so they always feel scared and insecure. Um, the fifth house for these people is Sagittarius. Um, so fifth house is their personal aesthetic, and Sagittarius is your intellectual higher self. So it deals with education and um, <clears throat> social uh, perceptions of education. So where Scorpio is actually gathering information, the Sagittarius is more like the cultural accepted model like religion or science or whatever. So these people <clears throat> tend to try to dress in a way that um, other people recognize them as having achieved some level of, like, intellectual um, prowess. And so, you know, they, they tend to come across as like, wow, that person, they look really stylish and they must know a lot um, because of the way that they're dressing. So they tend to dress pretty professionally and creatively as well. Um, these people's sixth house, which represents enemies and your routine and your health is Capricorn, and this is a sign of anxiety and delays. So these people's health can be delayed, um, and they have a lot of enemies typically. They, they go through a lot of difficult experiences in their life because their goals are so big that it gives them anxiety, and this can actually lead to, some, lead to a lot of depression because people don't think of Leo as an emotional sign, but if you look at where the other signs are from it, fourth house in Scorpio, sixth house in Capricorn. These people deal with a lot in the pursuit of becoming their highest self. It is not easy task to, be, to spiritually and uh, evolve yourself into a version of your highest self, which is these people's life, life goal. So these people have a really hard time organizing their routine into uh, the routine that would craft them into like their highest version. So that's difficult for these people. Um, but after the age of 30, if they put in the work, they will start getting that routine and that job and that, that way of looking at the world that, and acting in the world that they, they feel like is representative of their higher self. Um, but Saturn gives you what you put in, so you do have to do the work. Um, and these people will feel very anxious if they're not doing the work more than other signs. Um, so the seventh house. These, these people's seventh house, which deals with relationships, is in the sign of Aquarius, and Aquarius represents scientific thinking. It represents uh, using technology to leverage your time better. So these people tend to find partners who are very practical and creative and um, people who can help them organize their time better. And they tend to look at their relationships as investments because if you're trying to be your highest self, obviously you don't want somebody who's going to be pulling you down and wasting your time. Um, so they tend to be pretty harsh judges of the opposite sex or whoever they're interested in their relationship with. And also because their seventh house is ruled by Saturn, like the Cancer Ascendant, they tend to have late um, marriages, late relationships, and they're 
they tend to have delays in their relationships and they should not get uh, settled down before the age of 30 um, because if they try to it will be taken from them typically and they will learn hard lessons in that process because they weren't ready yet um, the eighth house of these people which represents commitment and it represents deep learning is in the sign of Pisces so these people are open to learning pretty much anything and they'll dive into any sort of knowledge that they can find which is a very good trait this is a good place for the eighth house um, these people's ninth house is um, Aries and ninth house represents your ability to learn the cultural knowledge and the knowledge of other cultures as well um, any sort of religion, science, philosophy, all of that stuff, your intellectual higher self being achieved. And because this is in Aries, and Aries is not necessarily a very intellectual sign, they tend to be pretty critical of all institutions of education because they would rather, they feel like they can learn it better themselves, which they probably can. Um, the 10th house for these people is Taurus. And since the 10th house represents your delays and the impact you will leave on the world, these people have a harder time attaining resources until later in their life, past the age of 30. So they could go through periods of their childhood where they like nobody's feeding them or they feel neglected or something like that. And um, but this instills in them a great value for the basic material things because they don't take them for granted. So they work for them and they, they're they very grounded because of this. Um, these people's 11th house is in Gemini. So 11th house is the ability to um, be in a group, a large group, an organization, organize people. It's also your ability to think scientifically and use your time better and use technology. So these people's 11th house is Gemini, which is the sign of communication and your friends, your close friends. So <clears throat> because these people's 11th house is in Gemini, they this is a very good place for it because they can use their ideas and their information and their ability to think to gain and to use their time more productively, which not everybody else can. So these people are very productive and intelligent at getting at using their time better and organizing large groups of people it tends to bring them pretty good amounts of success. And these people's 12th house is cancer. So 12th house represents isolation. It represents uh, spirituality, it represents theories, um, and it represents your fantasy life. And these people's dream basically is to be secure and stable and, um, but because they are constantly like seeking their highest self, their highest version, this uh, stability and happiness can be constantly kind of postponed. But they are, it's always in the background. Like, if I get this, I'll be happy. If I get this, I'll be happy. If I get this, I'll be happy. And that's what, one of the main reasons why these people's emotional states suffer. So, but it suffers in the pursuit of being all they can be, which is one of the most difficult things that a human being can actually do. So that is the my video on the Leo Ascendant. If I had to sum this Ascendant up, it would be basically um, the Bruce Lee quote, uh, the one where he says, like, it's better to... Um, to pick an impossible goal and fail than to pick a mediocre goal and succeed or something along these lines. Another, another quote is if you shoot for the moon and miss, you will land amongst the stars. These people have a lot of stuff to do in their life. And in their pursuit of that, they get closer to perfection than most people ever would really dream. So that is my video on the Leo Ascendant. The next video I make will be the Virgo Ascendant video. So tune in for that.